Uh, my name is Richard Fredman, and I am the head of the Performing Arts Department. It includes the core subject of dance and drama, uh, and I also oversee the department's uh, range of four uh, stu staff-directed productions and five student-directed productions in every year, alongside our technical and admin staff. And I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague Lydia, who is in a very, very echoey uh, theatre foyer. Hello! I'm Lydia Ayres. I teach on the Drama and Theatre A-Level. I direct the Year 12 Christmas Enrichment Show and I work closely with our technical manager, Brendan, on all aspects of the management of that project, most excitingly the set design. I also work closely with our technician, Alex, on lighting and sound and with our wardrobe manager, Linda, on costume. And now, here's Amelia. Hi, I'm Amelia Perry and I'm now in Year 13, so I'm my second year of Drama and Theatre. Um, in Year 12 in Drama, I saw eight shows in professional theatres and eight shows at Hills. I've performed and directed as a part of the course. And I love playing Rachel Crabb in the fantastic enrichment show, One Man, Two Governors, last year. And then right now, I've started work on my final devising project, and I am part of Rich's ensemble production of Under Milkwood. Over to Jake. Hello, I'm Jake Dan, and I'm also a Year 13 drama student. I was also in One Man, Two Governors. Here you can see me playing a very pretentious, pompous actor called Alan Dangle, uh, who's really fun to play. Like Amelia, I'm just starting work on my devising project, which is going well. And I'm also in Richard's Under Milkwood, so I'm um, practicing my Welsh accent for that. Uh, so back to Richard. Uh, thanks, Jake. Uh, so we've got a lot to get through, so this will be fast. Uh, the good news is you'll be able to ask questions at the end and watch it again at any point. So if you have a, a question for us, pop it into the chat uh, and we will get to it at the end of the talk. But we need to cover two curricular production texts, uh, the wide range of shows that we see, two major curricular practical productions using 12 different practitioners, all supported by a drama options program of professional after college classes and backed up by our four staff directed drama productions as part of enrichment, including a visit to the Edinburgh Fringe, as well as a range of independent student productions. So we've got a lot to get through because we like to keep busy. We're going to give you a flavour of all of this now, as well as a peek into the spaces that we have here and some of the some behind the scenes action in our promotional video. In this video, you're going to hear students calling the subject theatre studies. That's still what we call it internally, though its formal title is now drama and theatre. So here's the video. It lasts for, for four minutes and we will see you out on the other side. about theatre studies is the way it introduces you in such a short time to such a wide range of plays, playwrights, styles and practitioners. Before I came to Hills, I expected it to be really theoretical but the teaching has been really practical and I've had the opportunity to work with dozens of students from different schools and youth groups from across Cambridge. Everyone is united in their goal of creating something that's, that's brilliant and that's what I love. It really has benefited me being in a place where people genuinely love learning and love what they do. So I've already been involved with two enrichment plays, um, Christmas Carol and Caucasian Chalk Circle. And it's great because you can get involved with loads of people and really produce something you're proud of. But 
you don't have to be part of the cast, you can go backstage, help with the technical side or costume design. There's really loads of ways you can get involved and have some fun. I staged my own production and I directed a piece called Betrayal by Harold Pinter and it was great because the project was entirely in my own hands and I had the costume department to help me out and I had a wonderful set designer who built my set for me and I got to work really closely with people that I really get on with and it was a really invaluable experience. One of the most exciting bits of the Hills Road theatrical calendar is the annual Babylon Theatre Fringe Show. Every year we make an original, brand new show from scratch with a group of our leavers just before they go off to drama school or university. We work with a professional director, a writer and a professional composer to make a piece that's going to go up to Edinburgh, the largest arts festival anywhere in the world with literally hundreds of companies producing thousands of plays. And our students are up there in front of a proper public audience for the first time. Thank you very much. So uh, there's a number of questions coming in. I'm hoping that many of them will be answered as part of the presentation, but if they're not, then we will certainly get to them uh, at the end. Uh, but meantime, we'll plow on. So the production that you saw there in its final stages of rehearsal was our 2017 enrichment production of the Caucasian Chalk Circle. This is now a set text and you will get a chance to tell this epic tale. In the video, you met Rihanna. So she went on to get an A star. Uh, then joined us to make a Babylon Fringe show, then interned with us for a year making her own show called Those People, and she's now at East 15 Drama School. And with her, in the poster of Those People, and uh, on stage there was Lara. Uh, so the other half of Those People, Lara also got an A-star in drama and has just begun her training uh, at Ecole Philippe Gaulier in Paris. Uh, a fearsome clown teacher. Uh, here are some of Philip's famous alumni. Uh, so as you can see, Lara is in very good company. This is Ollie. So Ollie got top marks for both of his practical projects and like Rihanna has just started at East 15 Drama School. This is Tom, uh, who you saw performing in the short circle. Uh, and various other things. He wrote and performed his own sketch show at Hills and was in every enrichment show going. He got an A star and is now at Durham University. And this is Gio. Gio got an A star as well and is now studying at York on their excellent directing and writing BA. So why should you take drama and theatre? So drama is about people and how and why they do what they do. So you will always be exploring psychology. We also need to understand characters and their actions in the world they live in. So we were always learning about sociology, history, politics, philosophy, religion and law. We also need to understand their world of work, their culture, their language. And so depending on the character, we might need to look at culture, science, criminology, languages, art, economics and ethics. We need to create their worlds on stage, so we always need first and foremost to be artists. Then we need to work openly, honestly, truthfully with each other and so we've got to be collaborators, interrogators, supportive critics, friends. Uh, here's a very quick overview of the course. So there's a single written exam that is worth 40% and involves a study of two set texts and we'll see a range of theatre to provide you with the materials for a live theatre review. 
and then there are two practical exams worth 60 percent uh, if you've done a gcse you will be familiar with this if you haven't don't worry we will get you up to speed uh, one devising exam and one text-based exam each supported by the techniques and theories of a different practitioner on the course we develop the skills of actor of director and also designer we're constantly using practical work to inform our understanding of these skills amelia can you tell us how you have been approaching the written paper yes uh, so we tackled each individual element during the year writing short answers based on the practical work then wrote a full exam practice in the summer we'll get another full mock in january but the skills apply across the whole course so we are developing constantly can you tell us about the first of the two set texts, please, Jake? Yep. So for Bronte, you need to have a set design. Uh, you need to have a lighting design, ideas for costume, as well as be able to say how you would direct the actors. So what we did is we staged the whole play in a workshop production, which was invaluable experience. It's a great, powerful play about women winning the winning the fight to be recognised as writers in their own right. And then for our second set text, we took on the Caucasian Chalk Circle, where we got to work in an ensemble style. You've already seen a production still, so here's Julia Stephen playing the central role at the National Theatre. It's a really open show, so we could really create our own interpretation. I work with a small team to really develop my directing skills. It tackles modern and hugely relevant themes of social inequality and the fight for justice. These are two rich and challenging plays that enable us to work in the styles of psychological realism, expressionism, ensemble theatre, physical theatre, epic theatre. They introduce us to and develop our understanding of four key practitioners, uh, including Bertolt Brecht, Complicite, Shared Experience and Konstantin Stanislavski. And what about the productions we go and see? Well, we have seen a lot. One of my favourites was The Lovely Bones, which you can see there on the top left. Uh, we saw that at the Cambridge Arts Theatre and it had an amazing set with an amazing two-way mirror ceiling that covered the entire stage. I really enjoyed It's True, It's True, It's True, which you can see in the middle there with the paint all over the woman. Um, it was a brilliant devised piece that we saw at our local arts venue, the Cambridge Junction. It was totally hilarious, but also incredibly heart-wrenching. Another show we saw at the junction just below It's Truth, the poster there, uh, was a show called One, which was a bizarre uh, cast of two doing some incredible clowning that was really unique and not a show I probably would have gone to see if I hadn't been doing A-level drama. And then um, my absolute favourite involved a coach trip all the way to Nottingham, where we saw the amazing Institute, you can see the poster on the far right, which was an extraordinary combination of dance and clowning. And I'd never seen anything like it be before, so it was really nice to go and see something like it. We've also seen physical theatre from Frantic Assembly. And we saw the Baton Theatre and Promenade Theatre from the show I Will Be Everything. And we also saw and performed, and performed in an amazing range of work at Hills itself. Uh, so my highlight was Gilgamesh and Me, which you can see in the middle there. Um, it was a, another brilliant example of a device piece, which was hilarious, but also really visually amazing, um, using a massive ball puppet for the climax of the piece. And you can watch this entire show on YouTube. I also really loved uh, the X Hill student physical theatre company, uh, Temper Theatre, who brought their latest show, Night Shifter, to the college which was a really fast paced uh, physical theatre piece with uh, incredible lighting and aesthetic uh, design, really unique piece. And as you saw, we were both in Lydia's brilliant production of One Man, Two Governors. So Lydia, the obvious question, and some people are already putting this into the chat, understandably, the obvious question here is how will this work while the theatres are closed? Yeah, that's a great question, in fact. Uh, but the answer is yes, sadly, we will be watching theatre screenings for a while. By the time you get here, we hope, obviously, that theatres will be open again and we can go on proper trips. But in the meantime, we actually have a fantastic programme of screenings here where we watch top shows together in our theatre on the big screen. We think it's, it's really very important that theatre is experienced with other humans and on a large scale. So just recently, our New Year selves watched Emma Rice's Wise Children, a wonderful show. Uh, they watched it together in our theatre on the screen. Next, they're going to be watching Jane Eyre from the National Theatre, then Small Island, another fantastic show, then Gecko's The Wedding. 
and so on. So we've got lots uh, that our students can watch here, and they will also have access to a vast reservoir of other shows via our Digital Theatre Plus College licence and our own archive of amazing shows. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we are allowed to uh, bring our students in as a socially distanced audience. Uh, it's much more difficult when we go to a paying public. Uh, so we're going to work towards that as soon as we possibly can, and certainly in time for our Christmas show. But in the meantime, we'll continue making and watching our own work. We're currently working on a year 12 production of Much Ado About Nothing and a year 13 production of Under Milk Wood. Let's talk a little bit about lessons for a moment. Amelia, what happens in a typical lesson? So it's usually really practical. Warm-ups are really fun, but they're always targeted towards the development of a specific drama skill through the techniques you can see on the slide now. We do whole class workshops to explore the styles and practitioners that we're studying, and then we break up into smaller groups to work on the plays and set texts. And what about lessons under the new COVID regulations, Jake? So thankfully, it's mostly the same. The difference is that we're maintaining basic social distancing in the open workshops. Our full group sessions take place in the college's large, well-ventilated hall. And then when we break out into small groups for our individual pieces, we're in performance bubbles. Thank you. So another key element of the course is developing understanding of the work of key practitioners the directors and designers who have most influenced modern theatre in Britain. The two practical projects must be informed by their work. Our ambition at Hills is to give you the widest choice possible. Over the last couple of years, our students have staged pieces in the style of... Stephen Burkhoff, Bertolt Brecht, Peter Brook, Complicite, Dario Faux, Frantic Assembly, Gecko, Headlong, Katie Mitchell, Shared Experience, Max Stafford Clark, and Konstantin Stanislavski. We believe it is this range and the sheer level of exposure and stimulation that enables our students to perform so well in exams. The full list of practitioners also includes top designers, as well as those who specialise in verbatim theatre or puppetry or multimedia or site-specific performance. So now let's move on to the two practical exams. You'll get a flavour of these in some video clips shortly, but here are some images of some top people. Firstly, the devising exam, where you create your own work. So past successes at Hills include The Lover's Escape, inspired by Nehi, where everyone got an A-star. And then On the Street. Uh, which was a knockabout piece about homeless people and was inspired by the amazing Italian practitioner Dario Fo, and the whole class was awarded either an A or an A star. Love Mun, which um, was inspired by frantic assemblies techniques and uh, dealt with very emotional topic of dementia, and again, the whole cast was awarded an A star. So another group in the same year uh, used the style of Gecko, who they had seen live, uh, and were hugely inspired by that, creating a piece called The Rift, and were awarded either an A or an A star. And also another success was a show called Grey is a Beautiful Colour. This production was inspired by Headlong, Headlong's techniques, and it was looking at a dystopian future. Again, the whole cast and the student director were awarded A stars. Uh, and then Prometheus Rebound was a piece inspired by a theatre de complicité and specifically their production a disappearing number um, and if you know anything about complicité you'll recognize them from that image uh, the whole cast was awarded an a star over the two years of the course on the text exam uh, you explore three extracts from three very different plays the process of reading and exploring plays is one of the richest parts of the course the final extract is performed under exam conditions. Recent successes include... Attempts on her life, which was performed in the style of Peter Brook. And again, the whole cast was awarded an A star. The birthday party, which is a pincer play, but was performed in the style of Stephen Burkhoff. And the whole cast and their student director were awarded A star. Angels in America, a phenomenal play about the AIDS epidemic. Um, which was performed in the style of Stanislavski. The whole cast was awarded a star. Pool No Water, a play by Mark Ravenhill and performed in the style of Frantic Assembly, who commissioned the play originally, and the whole cast was awarded either A or A star. 
Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead by that brilliant absurdist piece by Tom Stoppard, which was performed in the style of complicity. And again, the whole cast was awarded a star. And then The Trial, uh, a piece by Stephen Burkhoff performed clearly in the style of Stephen Burkhoff. The whole cast and their student director were awarded a star. So Lydia, what else do we do to support the classroom work? Uh, so we have three main sources of extra support and stimulation. So firstly, there's regular progress review and one-to-one -one coaching on written work and on performance from your teachers. We're ably supported by our interns. This is Philly and Zavi. They're two excellent leavers from last year who are here to work alongside this year's students on all aspects of the course. So that's the first strand of the support. Secondly, uh, we have our extracurricular drama options program. Here are the five classes that you can take. What can you tell us about these, Amelia? So the options are brilliant. You get to learn so much um, that you wouldn't necessarily learn in an actual drama lesson. So each year you get to choose two out of the five courses. Last year I did screen acting and physical theatre and then this year I'm doing improv and puppetry. We've just signed up and are starting this week. Uh, so here's a slide, uh, a picture of X Hills Theatre Company Temper running a dynamic workshop in the College Hall. Uh, indeed right now there would need to be a little bit more distance between the performers uh, but otherwise uh, it would be the same. And thirdly, there are also our fantastic high quality enrichment productions. So there are staff directed shows and student directed shows. In any given year, we have four full scale productions directed by staff. Uh, for the year 19 to 20, uh, these were, and you've now heard a, a number of things about uh, One Man, Two Governors. It was a hilarious Christmas themed piece of modern comedia. This is poor old Alfie the waiter getting smacked unconscious by a cricket bat. <laughs> we followed that up with A Matter of Life and Death from the gorgeous company Nehi, where we recreated heaven using parachutes and lights. And we contrasted this with some Shakespeare in a dark dystopian updating of Measure for Measure with live cameras pursuing the actors. And finally, our not the fringe lockdown special, Boo Boo Killer King. Not to be daunted by the loss of this summer's Edinburgh Fringe, a cast of 12 intrepid performers devised, wrote, composed and filmed their own adaptation of the Ubu plays. Uh, and sometimes we have four or even five student directed shows a year. Here's a selection from recent years. The fact that for two years a professional standard theatre with its technicians and wardrobe is yours is one of the things that makes Drama at Hills so special. These are the main shows that we have staged and they've been either written by or enti and entirely staged by our students between 2018 and 2020. Sadly, that's one thing that our year can't get back. We had so much planned, two musicals, two plays and shows, but they were need to be rehearsed in the early summer during lockdown. But we're sure you will be able to make your own shows here when you get to Hills. So we're moving towards a close now. We've talked the talk and we've shown you some very pretty pictures. But what about our results? So after the, over the last three years, 93% of drama students have achieved a top grade compared to only 51% nationally. Uh, but that doesn't quite give you the full picture. So here are our results from 2019, the last fully examined year group. So as you can see, in that year, the national A star to B um, percentage was only 42%, but ours was still up in the 90s. Just look at the A and A star. That figure, that percentage is 17% nationally, but for our students, it was a staggering 67%. So one in five of our students actually achieved the top grade of A star compared to one in 20 nationally. And our average grade score, as you can see at the bottom of 4.8, was actually the highest in the college. So yes, this was a very talented cohort, uh, but we also helped them to achieve. The proof is in our added value from the same year. Here's the slide. It's not uh, perhaps quite big enough, but I hope you'll get uh, the idea. As you can see, uh, students from every level benefited from the experience in teaching at Hills. The black wavy line you see at the top is the college average, and the red upward lines represent students' GCSE baseline, with the lowest towards the left and the highest towards the right. 
So I hope you can see from that image that not only have we particularly helped those at the lower end on the left of the picture, but also at the top end on the right, and also the students in every single GCSE band have gained value. Uh, here's another visual representation in which the four columns at the right, uh, the blue and then the three reds uh, are also showing uh, grades achieved against a national, which is zero, and the college averages, which is the red wavy line. And finally, what about our student destinations? So this slide shows you where last year's leavers have gone on to. But that's just a tiny snapshot. The fact is that we have ex-drama students who work in banking, in insurance and in business. We have students who have become psychologists, social workers, therapists. We have students who have become lawyers, executive directors, even doctors. And then, of course, there are those whose careers are in drama or closely associated professions. Here are a few ex-students and where they have ended up a few years after leaving Hills Road Drama. So we have Hannah Morrish, who trained at London Drama Centre, is now a professional actor. And I saw her uh, last year on stage at the National Theatre performing with Rafe Fiennes. Very exciting moment. Uh, jo Newman went to Birmingham University to do drama, formed her own theatre company there, and is now resident director at the Salisbury Playhouse. Uh, Polly Ingham, now Ingham Watts, uh, studied history and politics at York um, and went into theatre initially at the Oxford Playhouse, but has transferred her managerial skills now to the general, uh, the, the uh, National Trust. Joe Bass went straight from Hills, not by university or drama school, straight into an apprenticeship with Britain's Got Talent and is now a freelance television producer. And lastly, Andy Lake went to York University. Uh, where he uh, studied the writing and directing course and is now a presenter with his own show on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. And here are just some of those who did drama and got into study at Oxford, Cambridge or Durham. If that is your aim, we won't hold you back. And here's a fun fact, 75% of all of our ex-drama students actually go on to study at Russell Group Universities. Thank you. Yeah, we are particularly proud of our resident training company, Babylon Theatre, and think it's one of the reasons for some of these students' successes. Boo Boo Killer King was Babylon's 16th show, and these are some of the company's many review highlights. The amazing thing is that X Hills drama students have created no less than 25 professional theatre companies since the year 2000. Uh, so these are just the ones that we know about. That's uh, over, over one a year. Uh, so have a quick moment to scan those. I uh, don't know how many of the names you will recognize, but all of those people are out there uh, making theater. We wish them well and hope that they are still there after COVID. And that's partly why we're very excited to be announcing our new resident group, Babylon Young Company. Uh, this is going to run on Saturdays in term time from January with a core teacher who's very splendid, and well-loved Sam Plum. And we also run at the college Elevation Youth Dance. If you're interested then, uh, and you're a dancer but didn't uh, go to the dance talk, then please contact Helen Garner, our head of dance at the college. And here are some of the many emails we received just this last summer to, from students who wanted to thank us for helping um, get them to the next stage. So we're going to finish in a moment with a quick montage that our interns have very kindly put together uh, of recent uh, performances. Uh, but here's just a couple of slides of other student comments uh, from last year's leavers. And one more. And so before we get to the Q&A, we will watch uh, a montage of live bits of performance. Oh, hello, Arthur, my darling brother. How the 
Morgan. Your sister Morgan on the phone. Yes, she is busy yourself with woman tasks. <laughs> but we'll be waiting there. Joseph Kane! So without having done anything... He was arrested one time! His landlady who usually brought the bread up at 8 o'clock! He failed to appear! That had never happened before! I always get so closeted at these family things. Butch! You get Butch! <laughs> hey, Cousin Boris, you don't remember me. I'm whoa! Rachel's boy. Okay, you stay here. I'll go get it. Herschel, where's my good God? Colonel Mustard in the ballroom with the leg pipe. <laughs> Or, or seem so craftily, and that's not good. Then let me be ignorant and in nothing good, but graciously to know that I'm no better. Did I tell Okay, so that's, uh, that's the presentation. Thank you. So uh, let's whiz down through some questions. Um, and uh, it's quite a, ooh, lots of votes for do you cover musical theatre at all? Uh, the answer is not formally as part of the course, uh, because the course is drama and theatre studies. Uh, there used to be a course called performance studies, but I'm afraid as part of the, re the rationalisation of A-levels, um, there were those in power who couldn't quite understand why you would want to combine the art forms, uh, so it fell victim, which is a great shame. Uh, so we encourage musical theatre. Many of our students love it. Uh, so Helen in the, on the dance side runs dance for musical theatre, and we often have musicals staged by our students. In fact, we had two planned this year that unfortunately have uh, fallen foul of the pandemic. So we will always encourage them, and we have uh, a fantastic music department um, and we're always delighted to put shows on. We have staged uh, over the years, Legally Blonde, The Producers, Cabaret, um, uh, Sister Act. So uh, we've done many, many musicals, but we don't formally teach them. Yeah, and there's also, just to add, there's no reason why you couldn't add uh, music or singing or dancing into your device pieces. I think both Amelia and I uh, have plans to have music in ours, so you can definitely do that. Yeah, thank you, Jake. A number of the practitioners we use, or you could use, uh, are very, very musical or dancey, uh, or, I mean, Nihai in particular, often many of their pieces, the most recent one, Wise Children, was very, very close to, uh, to with music, theatre wasn't quite a musical, but there were many, many uh, songs in it. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely great, great to shout. The entry requirement asks for a level six, as someone has asked, uh, Gabrielle, uh, or Gabriel, sorry. Uh, a level six in drama GCSE, if taken, what would the advantage of taking GCSE drama be and would students who have taken it be more likely to be admitted onto the course? Uh, the answer is uh, that if you've taken it, yes, we want a six. If you haven't, we look for demonstrable interest in drama and experience. We need you to have the practical experience and then we take your grade six uh, in your Englishes to make sure that we're happy that you will be able to cope with the written work. So no, uh, in every class, in every year, there will be several students who did not take the GCSE because we understand that not everybody can in every school. It's not always appropriate. Um, it's not always taught or, or, or the, the way that uh, people are trying to organize the, the EBAC or whatever means that it's difficult to take the subject. So as long as you do lots of drama, uh, uh, we will very, very happily take you to study drama here. How similar is it to GCSE drama? Well, um, Amelia, Jake. Yeah, um, so from the, at least from the 
drama course that I did at GCSD, it's very similar because you still do scripted performances, you still do a devised performance, you still study a set play, but it's just kind of all more. So you do multiple scripted performances, uh, only one's examined, but you do multiple of those. Um, when you do the workshop productions, it's kind of like devising, um, and then you obviously have an examined devised performance, and then you do two set plays. So it's very similar, at least for me, it felt very similar to GCSE, just more. The other thing that's different is the focus on practitioners. Uh, so we have a list of key practitioners that we have to incorporate into our scripted and devised extra. But that's fun researching them and uh, it gives you more breadth in your understanding. So it's yeah. not a bad difference. And I'd say if there's a building on the writing that you, those of you doing GCC drama will know there is obviously written work and A level builds on that. But if you haven't done GCC drama, that doesn't matter. You can still, the writing is different enough that there's a lot of new skills that we have to build anyway. So it's it's a development of GCC drama, but also it's sort of, you, as long as you're into writing, it stands independently. Okay, thank you. Hope that's answered the question. Um, Olivia's asked, hi, how will you do theatre trips and professional workshops if the pandemic continues? Uh, so um, we've, uh, we're keeping going with our options workshops. Uh, we had screen acting uh, this evening um, and we had uh, puppetry this evening. Tomorrow we've got improvisation. Um, all of these are continuing uh, in big airy spaces um, and we're keeping people at an appropriate distance and um, fingers crossed. Uh, we've got um, physical theatre starting after half term, uh, and then after all of those, um, our improvising improviser practitioner Sam Plum is going to stay on and do a whole series of workshops on play reading and directing for us as well. So all of those are continuing, um, and uh, the, sh the shows we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready to be back at the live theatre as soon as we can. Uh, but until that time, we're going to be making our own work and watching some fabulous shows uh, that have become available uh, during uh, during lockdown. Um, Lydia, do you want to take that one? How big, Tamitha asks, how big are the classes? What are our class sizes like? Um, and how much is group work and how much is individual? So that's like quite a few questions in one. So the classes uh, that Jake and Amelia are in, they're about 15 to 18, aren't they? I think um, yeah. that, that year group. Um, the year 12 now, the classes are bigger. They are, we've got three groups of around 20. So really, really healthy, lovely big groups of students. So it's very buzzy, very energetic, very dynamic. Um, the other part of that question was how much is group work and how much is individual? There's a lot of group work and um, that's why drama is so special because you have to work in groups and get to work with everybody in the class and um, across the different projects that you take. Um, so there's a lot of group work which is very exciting. There is some individual work. Um, the Jake and Amelia uh, performed one of their scripted exam pieces earlier on this year. They actually performed in a monologue. They worked and developed a monologue from one of Shakespeare's plays. They got to choose the play they wanted to work on. Um, they developed a character. They had their own whole individual piece. So there is opportunity to work individually. And obviously your, um, your devised pieces, your extract scripted pieces may well include monologues. But apart, you know, so we may well work on monologue, but there is a lot of group work. That sort of answer that question. <laughs> Uh, and we do a lot of our workshopping is 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 ensemble and we're devising everybody's in a group of about five uh, so so that's all ensemble work uh, uh lilia asks would it be beneficial to take a level english with a level drama um the answer is potentially if that's what you love and are interested in um so one of the joys of being a, a large sixth form center here is that you can combine pretty much anything with anything and we will be able to timetable it and resource it and we've had drama students doing double maths we've had drama students doing physics or chemistry or biology um a lot do history i think jake and amelia both do history um, yeah. lots do english but we have students who do a drama with dance and music and make it a a discrete performance package others go down the humanities route and will do uh, drama english and history um, but others will do, a, we have lots of art students doing drama. Um, so as I say, we, we have mathematicians and scientists. There's a, a, a huge array and, and you are absolutely encouraged to 
to you can consolidate with your a levels or you can go for for breaks and the main thing is that you love the subject and you and that's what's going to help you do well and at university uh, who wouldn't rather see three a's or a stars uh, than a subject with a, a b or a c in it where you you kind of felt you ought to do it uh, so do stuff you love and if you love drama we hope to see you here uh, class sizes uh Chital, so we've had the so we've got like uh, about 17 18 in the lower six and we've got uh 20 plus in the upper six uh charlotte says do you focus at all on film acting or is it all theater acting who'd like to take that one who did screen last year uh, i did screen acting last year um so you get the screen acting option which was actually really beneficial because um i've been you know thinking about options and whether i'm going to go into theater or film acting um and you work with a professional who's you know really dedicated to making you improve in the uh, film acting sector um and you get to produce like a small little like improv final role that you can have and so um and you work on the techniques that are needed in film acting so you have that one option um, but apart from that, it's mostly theatre acting. But if you do want to focus on film acting, definitely choose that option because it's it's a really good option to choose if you know, that's what you want to do. So just to, to come in on that, so where there are also, as there are practitioners who use music uh, and, and where there's often song or dance, so there are also practitioners who use a lot of projection uh, and, and live video feeds. You saw a little earlier on a few clips from our production last year of Measure for Measure, uh, where we had uh two cameras on stage with live feed that were being manipulated by the performers uh so so we also enjoy uh using those kind of techniques uh but the majority of actors train in live theater first and it's always uh struck me how many professional film actors want to return to the to the state so uh, our ex-student hannah was on with uh, Ray Fiennes last year at the National Theatre. Uh, Ray has returned to the stage. We saw Julia Stevenson, uh, who has made many, many films, but um, she's the patron of the Unicorn Theatre in London uh, and still relishes her moments on the stage. So the stage training is crucial, uh, even if you then uh, go into screen acting. I think stage acting teaches you the continuity of a role finding a logic for the role, a through line for the role, and you need to do that, and particularly in screen acting, because it's all stop and start and broken up and repeat and run it again, it's much, much more difficult to hold on to your, your through line. Uh, so, so stage training is crucial first, I would say. Um, what do you like to take Charlotte's question? Uh, so, what is the mix of boys and girls like in a class? Well, there are fewer boys than girls, but um, I wouldn't say I've ever found that to be a problem. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Lydia and Richard and uh, Amelia can attest I often end up playing female characters anyway, or Amelia might play a male character in um, One Man, Two Governors. Yeah. Uh, you know, who cares? Um, how many, what the other part of the question was how many classes, I think. Um, in upper six, there are three drama classes, and we sometimes do work together, uh, especially in the enrichment. So I don't know if the lower six classes there are. Okay, I think we're moving towards the close now. So, uh, with uh, thanks and apologies to my colleagues, I'll just whiz through. Uh, so, can you focus, says Edward, on technical theatre? Yes. Um, we ask you to participate in drama workshops, but you can be assessed as a lighting designer, a sound designer, a set builder. You can be assessed as a director, as a costume designer. Uh, can you do something drama film based for enrichment? Uh, yes, uh, that would be and certainly where, where many people do that is for the extended project. Um, so, uh, so but, there, there, but there are there's TV and radio as part of the formal enrichment. Uh, but if you wanted to make a film and the extended project would be a great place to do that. Uh, do you stay with the same group of people, uh, says Neve, uh, in both years or do your classes change? Normally you stay with the same class. Uh, sometimes people change because their subject choices change or they take up something new in the second year. Uh, so there might be a little bit of shift around, but normally you stay the same. How many students take drama each year? So at the moment in the upper six, we've got 50, in the lower six, we've got 65. So just over 100 across the two years, which uh, would normally fit very nicely just in our theatre. 
Uh, does drama fit well with art A level? Absolutely. You just need to be aware that art is a very time consuming subject as you work on your portfolio. And drama can be, particularly around the practical exams, also a very time consuming subject. So uh, some of our uh, highest performing students do four sometimes. Uh, some do uh, art and drama very successfully together. Can you write and direct the play for your EP? You absolutely can. Uh, you can do it for your EP, or you can do it because you just want to. Uh, and we will um, definitely try and make space for your theatre. So one of the thank you notes was from Eve, who said, thank you for letting me stage endings. She wrote her own play and staged it here. Uh, we've lost Lydia. Oh, Lydia's back. Hello, Lydia. Uh, so, uh, yes, absolutely. I, w I love it uh, if you uh, would write your own play. We've got uh, Flora Wilson-Brown is currently at York. She wrote and staged two plays while she was here. Peter Sayer wrote and staged his own play, and he's now, uh, he when it went to Oxford, he's now formed his own theatre company. So over the years, we've had lots and lots of people writing their own work, um, and we're very, very keen to encourage it. Uh, so I think we are uh, about at the close. So before we get shut down, I'd like to say a huge thank you to my co-presenters, uh, to Amelia, to Jake, and to and to Lydia. It's nearly back. Uh, so, um, and uh, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, Amelia from the Amelia House, Jake from the Jake Pad, uh, Lydia from Arcus Foyer, and me from Dance Studio um here at hills uh so thank you very very much for joining us if you have any other questions feel free please to direct them straight to me uh richard fredman so r fredman at hillsroad.ac.uk or my colleague lydia uh lydia airs l airs at hillsroad.ac.uk and we will answer them uh all right if you want to visit and see around in person then you can arrange that via our admissions team so I think I think we're going to finish now. We should sing a song. I know. <laughs> Lydia's gone dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway.